I do a truth instead? Okay, then. Who gave you the hickey? What? Can we just move on from there? Is he personal? Someone might get out here. I know who it was. Me. We're dating. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I can't That's really cute. Nick, so really? How long have you been going out? A few months. Well... Was saying it the other day. I never would have guessed Nick was gay. Yeah. I'm not bi, actually, but yeah. <laughs> Do you want us to keep it a secret? We're okay with people knowing. I'm sorry to ruin this very lovely moment, but I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I'm Ben Sebastian, here with my co-host S.A. Baz Collins for this week's Written on the Edge, Season 8, Episode 35, Entertainment Review. Baz and I will be giving our thoughts and reviews of Heartstopper Season 2 and exploring how it relates to queer life, as well as discussing its strengths and flaws. I'm curious, what are you and Albert thinking so far? Oh, we had the best time recording Season 2's reactions, which is now going to go up on Patreon and the YouTube version will be out this shortly. week so yeah this week definitely this week um so we're doing last time we did just to do a catch-up we did one through four and then five through eight for season one so they're in two parts all of which are now up on youtube as well as at our patreon and the full version full reactions are on patreon the uh shortened or condensed spliced version is on out on youtube um i guess the highlight reel if you want to call it anything um we had the best time we had the best time and we've gotten so many comments um it really has been a wonderful ride for us both at as albert and i reacting to it and on rote podcast we've actually increased a number of subscribers we have had uh, a wonderful round of people just saying that they love Albert's and my reaction, especially in season one, because I had already seen it several times and Albert had not seen it. So it was kind of a unique experience, <clears throat> excuse me, to see both sides of it. Um, and they thought it, we brought a lot of charm to our reactions. And so I thought that was kind of cool. So um, it's been fun. It's, he had a blast doing it. He was so excited. Every time I, I, we would start, he was just giddy. I mean, he was almost just bursting at the seams. It's really cute to watch. So we had a really good time with it. Um, and I think people are going to enjoy the uh, coming episodes, which we're doing in two episodes per round. So this week will be episode one and two. Hopefully by the end of the week, I may even have episode three and four up. And then we'll be moving on to five, six, and then seven and eight. So nice. that's the release schedule. And then this Friday, we are going to be review, reacting to Red, White, and Royal Blue. So that's our next one up. Which will be a review next week. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, IMDb's uh, blurb for Heartstopper Season 2 has not been updated since Season 1. So they say teens Charlie and Nick discover their unlikely friendship might be something more as they navigate school and young love in this coming-of-age series. While true for Season 1... There's more to it for season two. So let's get into it. What do you I, want to say? I, I, well, I want to kind of just go back to what I had for last week, this morning, um, in that I like how the show and the life of the actors who play on the show, how they overlap a lot. And, you know, in Kit Connor's case, it was a tragic mistake in that it forced him to come out just because of the peer pressure going on and it even drove him off social media for a while. Um, so, you know, there was that element and I think his response was pro much like his character was one of those most mature responses. He just said, I'm by thanks for forcing an 18 year old to come out to everyone. I think some of you missed the point of the show. Brilliant, brilliant move. It shows this kid has got one hell of a mind in that head. He really knows how to work these things out. Um, 
Joe Locke just recently announcing he was gay, although everyone pretty much assumed, um, you know, it's again, nobody, you don't owe anybody anything. So I love how this show has that ability. Um, there's a great series of interviews on the Attitude YouTube channel, which is a uh, queer magazine. And they have uh, the photo shoot of all the secondary characters. So you get Naomi and you get Felix and you get um, Mr. Farouk and Mr. Ajayi. So you get these wonderful interviews and they're really wonderful because they talk in depth about their characters, about the experience of being on the show, the complete mind-blowing experience they just thought they were making a quaint little show that was cute and wholesome and didn't expect it to become the worldwide phenomenon that it has so they're really blown away by the response to it um and i you know i think it's really kind of nice it's what i love about it the most is that it was it's a show that i wish i had when i was a teen um it isn't over high, highly sexualized it pokes at everything that teens go through emotionally um it does it in a very very smart and thoughtful way it's open with its representation it just is nobody has you know the, even people who have a problem with it you really see their them for who they are so you it's not something you go well maybe you know no they you, it's the whole when they tell you who they are believe them kind of scenario and i really like that it's that it has those moments. Um, season two definitely ratcheted up that whole premise because now we have parents more closely involved in the storyline. So you're getting to see really good parental advice and really questionable parental advice. So I really like how the series is using the parent characters in this teen story because often parents are sidelined because mm -hmm. you're so focused on the teen situation you don't really get a lot of the other but I think we're starting to see a lot of that now so the intergenerational kind of relation and also the kids kind of suspecting or seeing something in between Ajayi and Farouk that there's something going there uh, and that they support that um, it's also kind of a neat thing. So um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I'm really thrilled that the show's out there. I wish I had had something like this when I grew up. This is the after school special I wish that we had um, back in the day. But you know, it is what it is. And we get to see it now. So mm -hmm. it's to get to see it in your lifetime, right? Yep. So uh, stepping back, looking at it from an overhead storytelling point of view, there are two major i think things deriving the writing that are both incredibly good one coming out on your own terms in your own timeline is crucial and essential that is a constant throughout the story with almost all of the characters at one point or another um and i, I know it was driven or i should say probably accentuated by the real life events but it is really handled well in the story the second thing may not be as obvious until you really dissect it, but if you follow the Isaac storyline played by Toby Donovan, <laughs> um, the, the overarching premise that guides the writing for all of the characters is you are seen. You are seen for who you are and recognized for who you are once you know what that is. And it's this beautiful quilt of all of these different teens who have found each other in a sort of little found family, actually, um, which is very gorgeous. But they see each other almost, except in Isaac's case. The overarching belief of how society's relationships were supposed to work were imprinted on him by his friends until he blew up at them. But he could, didn't have the language to do that until he had seen an example of what truly was going on inside him beautiful storytelling on that front but yeah, again and, and great representation of fantastic representation mm -hmm. so I, I like i said i think the over it from from my sidebar side the overarching part there is you're seen just make sure that we know what we're seeing um yeah it, there's only one continuity the there's only one continuity thing that i caught in a rewatch while i was editing that I went, wait a minute. What was that? <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And that is during the very first episode of season two, where they have the sleepover amongst all of the characters. Mm -hmm. there's a scene where the girls all dance and they're trying to get the boys to get up and dance with them and none of the boys want to (laughs) and they go to isaac and tara tries taking the book out of his hand the book he's reading is the ace book that he discovers in the very last episode and i went wait (laughs) that's the cover of that book that he finds later (laughs) interesting yeah that would require a rewatch i wouldn't have noticed that I, I, it was only while I was editing and I'm actually looking at what I'm cl- clipping out for YouTube that I actually saw it. And I went, oh, my God, that's the book from the end. <laughs> it's, I guess, props. Nobody thought to really look at the covers of all the books they had for props. And right. they just handed him one or he just picked one up or I don't know. Or but, it's an example of, you know, most shows are filmed out of order. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes first episode is filmed after the final episode in case there had been changes along the way that they wanted to allude to in the first episode. Yeah. But in this case, I think they kind of blew it because it does say ace clearly on the cover. I think so too. Okay. That's later. (laughs) And he's at the end of the book too. He's like towards the end of the book. So he would have already had all the language. Yeah. So it's the one thing that I caught that I was like, uh, wait a minute. (laughs) Oops. But I didn't catch it when I watched it. You know, I didn't sure. react to it that way. So it was literally in the moment of editing and really fine tooth combing through the se- the, the episodes that I saw it, you know, and mm-hmm. that I just thought that was funny that it got by me. Uh, normally, I see those things and they, they catch my attention right away. This one, because of what was going on and because I was so invested in Isaac's storyline, I wasn't paying attention to what was physically in front of me. I was mm-hmm. just rooted, you know, riveted to Isaac's story, you know? Yep. So that's, that's also speaks to the wonderful writing that goes on in the story. And can I just say, poor Imogen, she gets the short end of every stick that gets thrown her way. Yes. And no, she's amazing. She, fr- would she's be an amazing she's, friend, but well, well, I, I no, no, she was looking at Sahar with very different eyes in the final episode. Okay, true. Yeah, I, so I was like, girl, what's going on here? <laughs> so are your numbers not fives across the board? They're not, actually. Um, yeah, I know you'd be surprised. But no, there are a couple of places where I kind of question what's been going on. Um and one that I'm concerned in the writing of where it's going to go. So um, there are fives across the board with the exception of screen screenplay and um, the art of the um, direction of, of the series. They're both 4.75s um, with my final summation being 4.75. Um, I just think what I'm concerned with the writing is that the fast pace of Heartstopper, you only get eight episodes. They're only half hour episodes. And yes, the series doesn't belabor the drama like a lot of series do, where they'll take one nugget of information and then stretch it across three episodes. This one does it, moves on, does it, moves on, but they still connect all the way through to the end, which is really wonderful. However, I don't know if you can continue doing a show that deals with the really dark places that charlie's in and do it justice so i'm a little fearful about how that's going to be handled now alice osman seems to have a grasp of what she's doing and and some of the books i guess have already progressed beyond where we are currently but you know eating disorders my husband who practiced teen psychiatry for years and dealt with halfway houses where for troubled teens and stuff you know, it's something that he and I have had a discussion about and eating disorders are among the toughest things to diagnose and to treat. Karen Carpenter, he pointed this out to me yesterday. Karen Carpenter had one of the best in the field and she didn't make it. So you need to understand that it is a very, very difficult scenario it's not something that you know nick is going to love away 
it, it, it is something that they will have to contend with and probably for the rest of their relationship because it is something that Charlie will deal with for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's something that I'm a little concerned about. Um, I think what they've done so far is epic. I think they've done a, a marvelous job of it, but I do have some concerns primarily because of the, based upon the discussions I've had with my husband, that the short format and the short amount of episodes really makes me question whether, I mean, 13 Reasons Why dealt with a lot of the same things and they did hour long shows and had 13 episodes each season. They, you know, still struggled with trying to encapsulate all of the mental health issues that they presented in 13 Reasons Why. And yet you're going to tell me that in a half hour episode, in eight episodes, far less episodes, you're going to deal with those same dark themes. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. That's the only thing that brings down the direction because I think they should have had that conversation and talked about it a little more. They, with the way that season one hit and everybody really loved it. I'm kind of like, well, shouldn't you've had a conversation? Maybe we go to 45 minutes at least for every episode or something. I, I, that's the part that I'm really struggling with. So it still gets a 4.75. I'm, hopeful i just don't know my numbers match yours exactly though i was afraid to throw another 4.75 at you but since you've introduced it i'm going to stick with it um and, and my fear just to to dovetail on that conversation my fear is they will fix it in a lighthearted way which will cause all teens who are actually dealing with eating disorders to wonder why they can't fix it quickly exactly that's my exactly fear. Yep. so my numbers match yours for exactly the same reason my my fear is the real world implications um, it's a wonderful show. It's a marvelous show. It is it's something that makes you feel good. Um, even when the kids are struggling, you know, you're rooting for them. Um, I think and it's it's just brilliant casting. The cast could not be more well chosen if they tried. And the fact that they're all actual teens playing these roles makes it even more special. Hollywood needs to stop with casting the 40 year olds to play 18 somethings. So, you know, it's just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. If you need further proof, go see the episode where Truem plays rugby against the sports Academy. And you'll see what I mean. It's right there in front of your face. So yeah, definitely check it out people and check out our reactions. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, Written on the Edge is produced by Rogue Ribbons Media. For our disclaimers, links to social media, our listening stations, or to sign up as a guest, visit www.roadpodcast.com. If you enjoy learning about new artists or hearing our thoughts on entertainment media, please like and subscribe so you get the alerts for new episodes. Tune in Friday for our interview with Willie Carver, and then tune in next week for your queer media fix. Bye now. Bye-bye. The Charlie wave. <laughs>